Right, so um, this is uh, a course on atmosphere ocean dynamics mostly. Climate dynamics, not so much, but uh, I will add a long chapter on uh, what climate means, climate variability, and climate change. So the main content, almost all of it, is from this very nice book uh, called uh, Atmosphere, Ocean, and Climate Dynamics, an introductory text by uh, MIT faculty John Marshall and Alan Plum. Both are big fans of uh, experimental fluid dynamics. So they have a very nice uh, rotating tank in MIT where they do a lot of the so-called geophysical fluid dynamics or GFD experiments and then they explain the theories and the equations and the dynamics of the phenomenon that you see in the rotating tank. Works very well and fortunately the book also uh, provides, you can find it online with Google, John Marshall, uh, all the uh, videos of the experimental uh, setup and the experiments. Uh, it's really worth watching uh, for some of the concepts, right? So I'm going to just run through all the chapters just to say uh, what we will learn here. Uh, the preface actually provides a good sense of why uh, fluid dynamics on uh, Earth is uh, unique and different. So in the next podcast, I will uh, show a couple of uh, those things. Um, then we'll look at the characteristics of atmosphere, very short uh, introduction, uh, which is basically what uh, you have probably seen. Uh, it's like a geography class at high school level. That's the level of that uh, background on uh, atmosphere. Uh, global energy balance, so essentially we have to see uh, the sun's energy coming in and Earth's energy going out and how that balance happens and how the greenhouse effect uh, comes about. Again, something you're probably exposed to. By the way, I already finished a course on uh, elementary oceanography called uh, Introduction to the Blue Ocean or some such thing. All the podcasts are on YouTube in my channel. You can watch the basics there. I have already posted many of the basics of how the atmospheric circulation gets set up, how air-sea interactions happen, how ocean circulation gets up, uh, sets up, but those are all done um, without too many equations. Here, we have to go through the equations, like the western boundary intensification, for example. Okay, so that's the energy balance, the vertical structure of the atmosphere. Again, you probably have seen uh, some of it, but we will go a little bit more into uh, things like hydrostatic balance. How do we derive it and what does it mean uh, in terms of understanding the dynamics of uh, atmospheric and oceanic uh, circulations, right? Convection is a chapter that um, introduces this uh, process. Convection in the atmosphere turns out to be a very critical process. Uh, it's explained here mostly from the point of view of the experiments. Uh, in the real world, uh, it's a very complicated thing and it becomes very critical in uh, weather and climate models. So it goes in a very different direction when you talk about modeling, but here we will get a, uh, an idea of how the process works, how it's related to uh, so-called lapse rate in the atmosphere, radiative convective equilibrium, and how convection changes the radiative convective equilibrium, uh, and so on. Then we come to the meridional structure of the atmosphere. Once we go through to see what is special about Earth's uh, fluid flows, then we'll see why meridional structure of the atmosphere is important and how it comes about. Again, related to radiative forcing, uh, concepts of geopotential height, winds, so we will slowly get into how energy has to be uh, transported from the tropics to the poles uh, to do the energy balance and so on. Then we'll get into the equations of fluid motion. We'll introduce how these uh, equations are derived. 
we'll look at uh, all the concepts of uh, conservation of uh, mass, uh, thermodynamics, uh, integration boundary conditions, and uh, equations on a rotating fluid. So the biggest challenge is then to do the equations by adding the rotational effects. What does rotation do to the equations of motion and how that sets up the beautiful solutions of ocean and atmosphere dynamics on uh, the Earth. Balance flows are where you begin to look at the special things in the atmosphere and ocean where stratification is very critical and you have rotation. So when you have stratification and rotation we begin to set up special balances that we, we will look at. Then the general circulation uh, introduce some really beautiful concepts of uh, the cells, the Hadley cell, baroclinic instability. What does it mean? We will go through that. Uh, thermal wind, again another large-scale balance, and ocean circulation. Um, there is a lot of beautiful mathematical solutions, elegant solutions of mid-latitude circulation which is not fully covered in this book but I will add uh, some podcasts on that from another book that I'll introduce uh, in those podcasts. In the ocean, uh, western boundary intensification or western boundary currents uh, become one of the more interesting concepts. We will look at that. Okay, and then look at wind driven circulation and thermohaline uh, circulation. I think the words are familiar, but we'll go through this. Uh, this book is not great for this chapter on climate uh, and climate variability. It's done uh, as an introduction because it's an introductory book, but I will uh, go through uh, several podcasts uh, to introduce this topic. Um, including and El Nino and past climates and uh, glacial interglacial cycles and so on. So should be a fun course uh, and we will see uh, how it goes, right? Should be fun. See you. Um, the book is uh, available on Amazon and so on. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, it's worth having. It's a good reference book. Uh, very nicely done, except the concept of vorticity is not uh, uh, included in this book. It's an important thing uh, for rotational uh, frameworks, but nonetheless, uh, it's not done here. So mid-latitude uh, is not done and vorticity is not done, but we'll still learn a lot, which will set you up to go off on your own and do the missing things.